Oh my god, I am yawning. Yes, I am, but no, I'm not tired because I have drank a ton of coffee, a ton of Diet Coke, and okay, now I'm ready to do the video. So with that said, welcome everyone to this video on the Rui Lopez exchange variation. Thank you for joining me. My name is Charles, and okay, let's get started. So how do we reach the Rui Lopez exchange variation? We play E4 as white, E5, Knight of 3, Knight C6, Bishop B5, A6, and now we exchange the bishop for the knight, and we've reached the exchange variation. And what could we say about the opening? Well, the opening was played by uh, Bobby Fischer, and uh, Fischer popularized this opening uh, by winning games versus top-level competition. He played with players such as Boris Spassky, who was world champion. He uh, he played it versus Lajos Portis, which was considered the who was considered the Botvinnik of Hungary, and he played it versus Gligoric, uh, having a decisive result versus all these players. Gligoric was considered the king of Yugoslavian chess. So with that said, um, this opening is very practical. I like this opening very much because it's the type of opening where it's very difficult to lose with white and uh, black has a hard time creating uh, winning chances. As a result, uh, I think that it's uh, it should be at least uh, implemented into, I mean if you're a king's pawn player, you should uh, review this opening just so that you gain a little bit more. You know, obviously any opening will give you more chess culture, but this this opening it's good for your practice, especially if you're a tournament player. Um, you don't you never know when the opportunity is going to show up when you might need uh, to play an opening such as this one. So luckily for us, I found some ambitious plans uh, in the opening, and uh, okay, let's see uh, how to start. So in this position, Lasker used to play d4, and uh, that's basically the old way of playing. Lasker, 21 con world champion for 21 consecutive years. But Fisher, Fisher rejuvenated this opening by playing castles here. And now we reach one of the main tabias of the opening. Uh, basically, there are a couple of moves here. F6 is the main move. Bishop to G4 is the other main move. And then there are sidelines like knight T7 and bishop to... Uh, and bishop to d6. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at all of these. We're going to go. We're going to first start with the two main uh, main variations, and then we'll go into the sidelines. Just because, uh, as a matter of importance, in terms of you know of, of what positions you're going to see in your games first, uh, that's why we'll go in for for the main variations. So f6 is the main move. After which we play d4. Pawn takes d4. There is a sideline here, which is bishop to g4, and we'll look at that in a moment. So pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, c5, and Fisher and uh, many players play knight to b3 here, but the move which I will recommend is knight to e2. And uh, this move has been recommended lately in some publications of this opening. Um, I personally like this variation because you gain quick development I mean you have all your pieces developed by like move uh, by like move um, by move 12 and uh, which you should right but uh, but compared to black um, it looks like white's position is just better so how does how would the game continue Queen takes Queen Rook takes Queen Bishop d7 Bishop e3 castles, knight c3, rook to e8, and now rook to d2, a fine move, bishop c6, threatening the pawn, but after rook to d1, not really. Uh, and now observe white's development, white is very harmoniously developed, and now he has the possibility of seeking for the initiative. For instance, after b6, white will play a4, and now we're trying to play on the queen side. We're trying to induce weaknesses in white's position. Notice that the pawn can be captured, because if it is captured, black will, white will play rook to d8 check, followed by rook takes bishop on f8. So here, typically, play might continue king to b7, 
or 97 97 a5 we play and uh, I prefer white here um, okay so let's go back the other alternative is bishop to g4 and this is a move that was favored by the great Mihail Tao but uh, what is Mihail <laughs> by the great Mihail Tao and uh, and here in this position we're going to play c3 after which black has the option of accepting the pawn on d4 which is a gambit or he could play bishop to d6 if bishop d6 then we play h3 bishop h5 bishop e3 queen to e7 Knight bd2. I want you to observe this this pattern of development. Knight bd2, bishop to e3, and knight to f3. This is important because uh, that's how you're going to typically develop your pieces when black plays bishop to g4. Then the other idea would be where am I going to develop the queen and when am I going to exchange pawn on e5. Okay, so play will continue castles long. We play queen to c2. The game might continue g5. And then we capture on e5, black recaptures, we capture again, and after pawn takes, I like white's position. So going back, if black accepts the gambit, or if black decides to capture the pawn, We simply play queen takes f3, queen takes d4, and white gets compensation here. Obviously, I mean, he's castled. Bishop f4, bishop d6, and now the very fine move, queen to g3. The idea being to capture the pawn on g7. So after knight c7, we play bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes pawn, rook to g8. And queen takes pawn on h7, and white is clearly better. He's more than likely winning. So going back. The next move that is highly popular is bishop to g4. And I have some interesting analysis here. We play h3 now, which is the main move. Now the main move for, for black is h5. But he can capture on f3, after which queen takes f3. And here, uh, depending on your level, it's safe to say that, um, that white has a better position because he has a better pawn structure and black doesn't have the, the, the pair of bishops to compensate. Now, it is difficult to create an imbalance in the position, which is why I have this, uh, this innovative way of playing the position, which is the following. After queen to d7, Instead of playing d3, we play queen to c3, attacking the pawn on e5, and now uh, the game could continue. Bishop to d6, we play d3, castles, knight d2, f5, b4, knight f6, rook to e1, and after rook h8, we play rook to b1, and our plan is very simple. We play a4 and b5. The idea is to play on the queen set. I personally like this plan very much I think that you'll have good results with it in your games so going back if bishop to h5 this is an interesting uh, variation because uh, black is fighting for the initiative and there was a famous game which I can't remember uh, between what players uh, right now but uh, play continues g4 Bishop g6, knight takes pawn, queen h4, queen f3, f6, these are all the best moves. Knight takes g6, pawn takes, king to g2, protecting on h3, g5, uh, trying to create a bind in the dark squares on the king side, d4. Very important to play d4. Typically, the move played here is d3. Um, I would prefer that we play d4. Knight to e7, rook to h1 over protecting our weakness on h3. King h7, king to g1. We're now um, creating threats of queen to g3 and capturing on c7 and also 
King G1 is a prophylactic move, uh, taking the king away from knight G6, knight H4 check. So castle's long, bishop E3, king B8, knight D2, queen G8, and now the move B4. And how we're going to play here is we're going to play A3, and we're going to play C4. And yes, we're up a pawn, but black has some dynamic possibilities, and as a result, it could be a little unclear, but needless to say, I would prefer being white here. So going back, the main move is h5, after which we play d3, black plays queen to f6, we play knight bd2, and now the main move is knight to e7. But if black plays g5, which has been played before, I have a very interesting way of playing in this position. Instead of knight to c4, which is how it's been played typically by top level players, I would suggest we play b3. And after b3, black is forced to play queen to g7. We follow with knight to c4. Black plays bishop to c8. He's threatening to uh, play g4. And now we play knight f takes e5. Excellent move. Double exclamation mark. b5, bishop to b2. White has compensation for the sacrifice piece. Pawn takes knight, knight takes f6, and now e5. And in this position, we have plans like queen to f3. We have plans like queen to d2 and queen to a5. Uh, rook to e1, f4. Uh, white basically has the initiative for the remainder of the game. And black's king is going to stay in the center of the board uh, for a long time because he's lacking coordination. So going back. After knight t7, we play the best move, which is rook to e1. Black plays knight g6. We play d4. And now the best move for black is knight to f4. If bishop to d6, uh, there are different ways of playing this position. I would recommend we play king to f1. Now we're threatening to capture the bishop. On a, on the idea is to threaten to capture the bishop on, on g4. It We basically enter a very unclear position. Uh, typically, black will play pawn takes. We play e5, and now black has an option of recapturing here with the knight or with the bishop. If knight takes e5, then we play pawn takes bishop, knight g1, queen f5. Our threat here is rook takes e5 followed by queen takes pawn on g4. So queen f5, knight e4, c5, and now b4. And even though this is unclear, I would prefer being white here. Because we're obviously up a piece, and after b4, we've created an imbalance in the position. We've basically created counterplay. So going back, if instead bishop takes pawn, then we play knight e4, queen f5, and queen to d3. Bishop takes f3, knight d6 check, pawn takes, queen takes queen, bishop takes g2 check, king g1, bishop d5, bishop g5, and now the position is completely unclear. It's probably easier to play this position for black. Needless to say, this is one of those positions where if you're better prepared than your opponent, you should win the game. And today, preparation is the easiest thing to do. So I would recommend it if you'd like to get uh, decisive results in your tournament play. So going back, the main move is knight to f4. And here, there are two plans. You could, you could play pawn takes e5, which is the way Shiroff has played versus uh, some top level players, queen g6, knight h4, and after e6, rook to e1, we have an interesting endgame, or you could play pawn takes bishop, pawn takes g3, pawn takes knight, queen takes pawn, and after knight to e6, we capture on e5, queen takes, Excuse me, we capture on e5, and the idea here is that after queen takes, 
we play queen to f5 and uh, and okay white white is doing perfectly fine here so going back now we'll take a look at some alternatives um, in the opening so if instead if not f6 if not bishop to g4 we have knight e7 and bishop to d6 let's start off by looking at bishop to d6 oh excuse me and queen d6 i forgot that variation bishop to d6 we play d4 pawn takes d4 queen takes f6 we're threatening queen g7 bishop e3 knight e7 knight bd2 bishop e6 and what you have to remember is the is the move queen to c3 this is very important notice how notice this development of white's pieces you notice the pattern how we develop our minor pieces in this fashion the idea of queen to c3 is to either uh, play on the queen side with b4 and a4 or play with knight to b3 and knight to c5 or play with knight to c4 either or um, the 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 plan is to play knight to c4 uh, for white, but um, these are the, the revolving ideas of queen to c3. So going back, if instead knight to e7, there was a, uh, a very a beautiful game between uh, Howell and Peter Heine Nielsen uh, that took place not too long ago, and the game continued knight takes c5. Queen d4, Queen to h5, g6, Queen g5, Bishop g7, Knight d3. Black can't capture the pawn because of Rook to e1, threatening checkmate. So f5, e5, keeping lines closed. C5, threatening uh, to harass the knight. B3, we can't capture the rook because we trapped the queen. B6, bishop to B2. And here white is just better. Black uh, black is trying to prove compensation for the pawn. And all, all white has to do is finish his development. And he's basically going to be a pawn up. And he's structurally uh, you know, better. And uh, he's really not going to have any difficulties developing his pieces. The game continued queen to g4, queen to e3. Knight to d5, queen e1, f4, a big mistake, f3, and after queen g5, c4, bishop f5, pawn takes knight, excuse me, not pawn takes knight, knight takes pawn, pawn takes, pawn takes knight, bishop d3, knight c3, uh, white just basically has two connected pass pawns, and uh, uh, he's threatening knight to e4, knight takes c5. White has an overwhelming advantage. So going back, the last variation that we'll take a look at is the move with queen to d6, and this is one of those other variations that's quite popular. Uh, Oleg Romanishin, who is a king of the double king pawn openings, has played this variation a lot himself, um, although he plays it quite differently. After knight to a3, he plays queen to e6 here. Either or, um, the main move here is b5, after which we play c3, c5, knight c2, and now there's two moves, knight to e7 or bishop to b7. But what I want to tell you about this position so that you don't have to memorize all the variations is that what's going on here is the following. White is going to, black is going to end up developing this knight to e7. And he's going to have a hard time. What white is trying to do is that he's trying to open the position as quickly as possible because black uh, is a couple of development moves behind. And as a result, White develops an initiative. Let's see how that happens. The main move is bishop to b7. We now play rook to e1, defending our pawn. Knight e7, a4, c4, pawn takes pawn. There is a shear off game like this. Pawn takes pawn, rook takes rook, bishop takes, and now b3. Pawn takes, knight a3, c6, and queen takes b3. 
And after queen takes b3, white is better here. Why? Because this, this bishop is basically uh, trapped in the corner of the board. And once again, this knight, who was developed to e7, uh, is hampering the development of this bishop. And so the king is going to be stuck in the middle of the board for quite some time. White is going to play to open the position as quickly as possible. So going back, the other move is knight to e7. So after knight t7, we play a4, trying to uh, gain, win a pawn, bishop b7, and now the move d4. Blasting open the center, once again, uh, the tactics favor white because this king is safer. So some example variations, pawn takes d4, pawn takes, and after bishop takes e4, we play queen to e2, queen g6, knight h4, and after queen e6, pawn takes b5, and white is much better here. Notice that all white has to do is play rook to e1 and bishop to any square, to e3. And he's developed all his pieces. And he's also deteriorating black's queen side. Going back. Another alternative here is c takes d4 after which we play pawn takes d4, pawn takes d4, and pawn takes b5. And once again, this, very, this, uh, this position is better for white.